Hello and welcome to our first video about our float switch kits and how to use them. These kits consist of a float switch and a relay board designed specifically to be used together. They come in a variety of different variations including different supply voltages and different types of float switch. Our most popular combination we have here is known as the float kit 1, consisting of a 10 amp rated relay board and a black polypropylene float switch. A few other examples of float switch include stainless steel barrel switches, lightweight white plastic switches, right angle barrel switches and blind hole stainless steel float switches. The wiring and theory behind these switches are the same so this video can be used as a guide to getting started with most of our standard float switch kits, though the installation of the float switch may differ and the scenario it's being used in may differ. Just so you know we are using the 12 volt supply version of the kit. Before we get going, just a quick note on health and safety. You may want to pause to read through these, but the most important points to take away are that you're not supposed to work with mains power or high voltages if you're not a qualified electrician. But if you are going to insist on doing so, be safe and get advice before you begin. Remember mains electricity and high voltages can be fatal, so carry out risk assessments and stay safe. As a rule of thumb, isolate things before you touch them. Don't let wires or tools short circuit and keep your hands dry. We are not using mains voltage in this video, we are just saying it as some people might want to use this kit to switch mains power. Another thing to note is that we don't use camera tricks or any other sly tactics to falsely promote our goods. For example, if you see our boards outperforming others during extreme testing, don't be surprised. Some of our boards are designed to work under much more demanding situations. Please do not perform anything that we say don't try this at home, at home or anywhere else. It will void your warranty, it can cause an accident, our staff are trained to deal with these extreme testing situations, please bear that in mind. Ok, we're going to jump straight into the installation of the float switch, as it is easier to explain each part as we go through the installation. We are using a plastic storage box for this video because they are clear and inexpensive so good for filming as you can see through the side. However, for a proper installation a purpose made water storage tank is better. These boxes that we're using tend to be brittle. If you are going to work with a thin plastic container, here are a few tips to note. This is an example of what not to do. If you press down too hard or drill without anything supporting the back of the area being drilled, you can expect this to happen. You can see there is a small hairline crack. These cracks and splits often cause leaks that are difficult to repair, so try to drill properly and get it right first time. Using a support such as a block of wood, and drilling slowly using a sharp hole saw designed for the material you're cutting through is the best option. You can remove any burrs using sandpaper or a circular file. We have put two holes through the side of this container which we marked first using a blue pen. One at a low point where we want the water level to come up to and switch and the other is about an inch or two higher and that's going to act as an overflow outlet should any part of the system fail. It's always best to prepare for those eventualities. As you can see here, we get the centre of the hole saw embedded in the plastic and as it drills through, I gently rock it, scoring the edges of the hole until we've cut them both out. Here is the tank after we have cleaned off the debris, ready for installation. The float switch we are using here already has the pluggable terminal and nut on. This particular float switch is installed by removing the nut and threading the wires through from the inside of the tank. We are leaving the silicone washer on the inside of the tank as it tends to work best. If your float switch comes without the wires in the pluggable terminal on the end, you can simply screw them in. It does not matter which way round you have the wires on this terminal. You don't need to over tighten them. For plastic switches like this, you can thread the nut over the wires and screw it on by hand. Be careful not to snap the barrel off the switch. You can use a spanner for the metal float switches if desired. You are probably wondering why you can't just route the power for the device you are switching directly through the float switch. We will explain this later. When we are done screwing the float switch in place, with the barrel hanging down into the tank, we can connect the float switch to the board. Make sure to keep the board dry. We recommend housing it in a watertight enclosure, such as an IP rated enclosure, and try to keep it up and out of the way. You can mount it on the wall, or you can mount it on the outside of the tank, provided it's not going to get splashed. You can extend the wires of the float switch easily if desired. Something like speaker wire is usually sufficient as these wires will not be carrying much power or current. Here are examples of watertight enclosures. We sell these but we have limited stock available in our shop. You can use these IP rated cable glands to get wires in and out of your enclosure. Before we connect the device we are going to control. We are going to power up the board using a battery to make sure it all works as we want and to demonstrate the basic functionality. 
You don't need a battery anywhere near this large, this is just one that we happen to have on hand. Here is a very simple drawing of how to wire it up. This is what we've got here. The red power LED on the board will illuminate when the power is connected correctly. You put the power into the supply terminal on the board. The power you're putting into the board should match the design variant, which basically means if you've bought a 12 volt board, you want to put 12 volts DC into the VCC and GND terminals of the supply terminal block. VCC is the equivalent of positive, ground is the equivalent of negative on a battery or a DC power supply. You should be aware that even if you're using the board to control an AC device, which for beginners is the type of electricity that comes out of a main socket, you should never connect AC power to the logic or control side of the circuit as shown here. The device you are controlling does not have to match the board supply voltage. You can switch anything up to the specification on the relay, in this case 10 amps at either mains voltage or 30 volts DC. Once you have an operational circuit board and the lights are coming on, it is easy to rush ahead and put wires in the control side to get your setup working. This is where people go wrong, but it is an easy mistake to make. It is often thought that the board routes power through from the supply terminal. It does not, and so it is easy to come to the conclusion that the board is faulty. The switching side is actually separate. This is done to allow more options in the devices that you are controlling. Instead, think of the board like two separate circuits. For example, this 12 volt powered board could be used to control a 250 volt pump by acting as an inline switch. Even if you are switching DC, the voltages do not need to match. A 5 volt or 12 volt board could switch a 24 volt circuit or a 3 volt circuit just as easily. Now our setup at the moment does not do anything other than turn on when the water level rises and turn off again when it drops. Since this is a demonstration, we want it to control something, so for now we are just going to connect up a simple 12 volt light. We are going to use a rotating beacon, because we happen to have one on the shelf doing nothing. So let's see how to wire it up correctly. Regardless of whether you are wiring up a pump, a solenoid, a lamp, fan, heater, if it runs on DC power, you're going to have a very similar wiring setup to what we have here. Just ensure that you use thick enough cable for what you're powering and the device you're switching. This light uses only a small amount of power, so we are using speaker wire. As you can see, the lamp has a red and a white wire. Red in this case is positive. We are going to switch on the negative side, which we recommend to most people working with DC power, especially if you've got a high load or a lead acid battery powering the circuit, as it reduces the chances of arcing. Arcing inside the relay is where sparks happen when it opens and closes, and they can reduce the life expectancy of the system. Here is a diagram of how we are wiring it up. As you can see, it's very straightforward. We've literally just connected it up. You've got a loop from the battery, on the negative side, we're actually taking it out of the ground terminal and we're looping that round to the common terminal on the relay. All that's doing is it's basically allowing the relay to now act as a common terminal for ground. Of course, in order for this to work, we need to connect the positive side of the device, in this case the lamp, directly to the battery or the VCC terminal. It only takes about a minute or two to wire this all up until it's ready to use. Soldering equipment is not essential, though I have chosen to tin either end of the wire, which I'm using as a bridge from the negative side of the battery or ground terminal to the com. I've tinned it so that the screw terminals can hold the wire better. When the relay is activated, the two terminals, normally open and common, will simply connect together, completing the circuit to the lamp, therefore turning the lamp on. As the float drops, it'll turn off again. OK, let's get on with testing out our setup. Although we could just lift the float by hand, I am going to add water anyway, and it should lift the float and turn on the light. There we go. Here are some other diagrams on how to connect it for different scenarios. In this example, we have a board powered by a 6 volt battery controlling a 24 volt device using two separate power sources. You can pause the video to view these in more detail or they're available on our website, which is iacselectronics.com. And here we have a 12 volt board controlling a mains powered pump. For AC, we have intersected the live terminals, the live cable, and routed that through the normally open. 
As with all of these diagrams, you can invert the state of the device so that it turns on and off at the opposite times by simply switching the wire that you have in normally open or NO and swapping it to the normally closed terminal. You can also have the board switch two devices simultaneously by putting them through the same terminal if they run on the same voltage. You can also have it so that it turns one device on while turning another device off. The advantage of using one of these kits over just routing your power directly through a float switch is of course that only a tiny amount of power actually goes through the float switch. For example we have a 12 volt board here but only around 5 volts is actually being routed through the float switch at any one time, even if you're switching a mains voltage device. Therefore the power is kept completely away from the water. So anything in the water, such as if you're using this with a fish tank, you don't have to worry about becoming live, because of course your fish aren't going to like that very much if they survive at all. The system is also a lot more reliable and safe than using a float switch alone. Just make sure that you keep the board dry, and of course have fun installing your device. We hoped you enjoyed our very first video and found it useful. There are data sheets and instructions available on our website in PDF documents ready to download and print out. If you have any requests for products or things that you want us to do, look into doing or explain in a video, we're happy to do so. We can't do everything, but we can try to do as much as we can. If you hold on to the end of this video, we have a 5% discount voucher for our website. We're also running a competition. Whoever shares this video the most by the end of August 2019 will receive a 100% discount coupon on a float switch kit that we've used in this video. You can request it in any voltage variant you want. So that's a free float kit as we've been installing in this video. This offer is available to anyone anywhere in the world as long as we can ship to your country. So give it a go and you may get yourself a free kit. Thank you for watching. See you next time.